plan to live in life. And Lord, we lift up you tonight. We invite the Holy Spirit to come. Lord, be with us tonight. Give us fullness, Lord. We're praying for you to come quickly. We love you. Again, we ask you to come and be with us tonight. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your word. Fill us with the knowledge of you. And with all of our getting, help us to get understanding, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the blessing of your spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you all of our heart and all of our love, our family, our future, and all that we ever hope to be, Lord, belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen. When I was about 12 years old, I was at, my, at church with my mama, and I heard the preacher say, and all you have to do is believe. And in my little 12-year-old mind, everything sounded very confusing until he said that. When he said, all you have to do is believe, in my 12-year-old mind, I said, I can do that. Amen. So I went forward, I walked down the aisle, and I asked Jesus into my heart. And within a few years, I began to seek my own way, seek my own life, do my own thing, and um, did all the wrong things, looking for love in all the wrong places. Yeah. And uh, as most of you can contest to, that when we're full of ourselves doing our own thing, we're going to end up in a bad place. And uh, when I got there in that bad place, I remember the Lord saying to me, where are you going? I didn't know it was the Lord then, but it was a voice inside me. He said, where are you going? And I knew that if I continued to go in the way I was going, I was going to lead to nowhere. I didn't know the name of it then, but it was outer darkness. But thank God the Lord saved me. In uh, 1974, it took all that time from 12 years old to, to 34 years old, 33 years old, to finally say, Lord, I give up. I want you to have my life. I want to let go of my life, and I want you to have it. And in 1974, I became baptized in the Holy Spirit. And from that time, you know, before that time, it was I was looking over every mountain. I thought, well, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm, I'm going to find what I'm looking for. But when Jesus came into my heart, I never had to look again. That was exactly what I was looking for. And uh, this week, I learned a word. It's a Hebrew word, and the word is toda. And in, in, the, in the English language, toda simply means thank you. But how many times do you say thank you to the Lord that it's just not enough? Yeah. It just feels like, well, I need to be saying something more than thank you. Well, that Hebrew word, Hebrew gives a, a picture of life instead of a Greek analogy of words. But thank you is, is good enough in English, but in Hebrew it means recognizing that we need one another. And that takes a humility. You know, when we teach our children to say thank you, we're teaching them really a form of humility, that we humble ourselves one to another and we realize that we need one another. God has not called us to walk this path alone, that we're not islands unto ourselves. We cannot do this alone. And we say, Toda to God, recognizing not only our need for him, but our need for the body of Christ. Right. And that we humble ourselves before him. You know, humility really means, if you look at the root meaning of it, it means to bend your knee. And it's not an act of submission, it's an act of subjection. We subject ourselves to God, not when we feel like it, but because of the covenant we've made with him, we, in all situations, whether we're on the mountaintop, whether we're on the valley, whether we're in the desert, God has called us to humble ourselves before him. And that's not according to how we feel. 
You know, we may not feel like this, or we may not feel because we could be in a bad situation. But God said, if we will humble ourselves before him, he will come and he will answer our prayers. There's a scripture that I wanted to share, uh, Second Chronicles 7.14. In fact, there's a few scriptures I want to share. It starts out with the word if. You know, God always gives us an if. He gives us an, gives us an option. When really, when we've made that covenant with God, we really don't have an option because we've already committed to do what he's asked us to do. But he says, if my people, which are called by my name, the word name means nature. He's called us to change our nature. If my people who are called by my name shall humble shall subject themselves to the word and the will of God. We have to do it ourselves. Humble ourselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. There's three things that he's willing to do for us if we're willing to humble ourselves and subject ourselves to his will and his word. He will hear us he will forgive us, and he will heal us. Well, you know, that's good news, isn't it? That is really good news. Well, shortly after I become saved, uh, I met some people that were baptized in the Holy Spirit, and I said, you know, I, I want that. I don't know what they've got, but I want what they've got. And I went to a little country church, and there was a, an elderly woman there, and everybody called her Mama Ross. And uh, she was really my role model to be a mama in the Lord. And by the way, that is my calling. That's what I function in. That's what I love to do. I've got a lot of people around that call me Mama Jan. And it is very satisfying. You know, all of us are called to be in the kingdom of God. And the kingdom is the power of God. It's realizing that, that the kingdom is a family, that if you're... A man, you're called to be a father eventually in the Lord. If you're a woman, you're called to be a mother in the Lord. There's um, in Revelations, it's called the many-breasted one. But it's the church of Jesus Christ that feeds the sheep, that brings the little ones to fullness. Hallelujah. And fullness is the goal. You know, we, we've been walking this way, most of us, a long time. But there will be a time, it says, that the fullness of God will come and fill all things. Isn't that an exciting thought? But being a mama in the Lord, um, Mama Ross was my role model, and uh, I saw her at the, at the altar weeping and crying, and I was so happy. I was on a honeymoon with the Lord, and uh, nothing could get me down. And there she was at the altar just weeping and crying, and I said, I didn't write then, but I called her on the phone, and I said, I need to talk to you. And she invited me to her home. I'll never forget, she was outside mowing the lawn with a push mower. And uh, we went in with some ice water. And, uh, and she said, I asked her, I said, well, what, why were you crying? I said, I am so happy and so full of joy. And, and I don't understand why you were crying. And she said, I was travailing to bring forth life. I was laboring in the spirit to bring forth life. Could someone hand me that water? My mouth is so dry. So as a mother in the Lord, or a father in the Lord, are, we're to give life, to produce life, to bear life, and to lift up those little ones that God gives to us. You know, all of us go through mountaintop experiences, all of us go through valleys, and all of us go through deserts. But it is the will of God to bring you out of a desert cir circumstances in power. And if you look back in the word of God, whether it was Jesus or Moses, whoever went into the desert came out in victory, came out in power. So no matter what you're going through, if you'll look to God for the answer, he will bring you through it. I've been through some 
some tremendous times. This year it'll be April 21st will be 35 years old in the Lord. God. I remember my mama Ross that uh, I was four years old in the Lord uh, about 1978, probably about the time that that Chuck came to the Lord, and uh, and she said. Uh, uh, what is it that you really want in life? And I said, you know, I, all I really want to do is I want to know the Lord. I want to serve the Lord. And she said, well, you know, what it's taken me 40 years to get, with that attitude, you're going to get it in four. She says, because everything that I've got, time is speeding up. God is doing a quicker work in these last days. And what I'm giving to you took me 40 years to get. And you're getting it in four. And I believe those who are coming to the Lord now are going to quickly come, come to maturity. Those who seek the Lord with their whole heart. You know, and, and that's the key, too, is wholeheartedness. Is to give your heart wholeheartedly. He says, when you seek me, I think it's uh, Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. So God has called us to ask him. You know, everything that God has for us is attainable by asking. You know, he has our inheritance. But until we go to him in prayer or in asking, we're not going to receive it. It says, now we know in part and we prophesy in part, so we have a, we have a part. But he said he is making us part takers of his divine nature. And that means you have to take your part. You know, it's not going to fall in your lap. It will come to you if you seek him with your whole heart. He also said in Jeremiah 33, 3, he says, Call unto me, and I will show you many mighty things which you knew not. But unless we're calling, unless we're asking, unless we're seeking, unless we're knocking, that's not, that our part is not going to be coming to us. It says, we know in part, we prophesy in part, but one day when that fullness comes, that we won't need our part because we'll, have it, we'll, we'll know even as we are known. It says that God will, before we can answer, God already hears us and knows our heart, and he gives us the desires of our heart. It says, in that time that there will be a harvest of every month. We won't have to wait, plant, and then wait a long time for the harvest. The harvest will come as we ask. It will be here. Thank you, Lord, for that fullness and that which is perfect is coming. And, Lord, we look to that time and we thank you, Father. We thank you that, that we can walk with you and talk with you, pray with you. Lord, we thank you, Father, that you're a man, a family man who is a loving God who loves his family and loves us dearly. So, Lord, we want to be faithful. Yes. We want to be faithful to believe your word, to understand your word yes. by seeking. It says, everyone who asks for wisdom gets it. So how many days have you gone by without asking God for wisdom? He says he gives freely to everyone who asks. So are you asking? Hallelujah. Are you asking every day? When you get up, write it down. Write it in your notes. Ask God for, for wisdom. There is so much freedom in, in, not, in knowledge. Think about the people who have passed away. You know, I'm, and my mother, because of lack of knowledge, lack of doing the right thing at the right time and getting understanding. So we thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers to give us wisdom. Yes. And we're going to be faithful to ask. Uh, a real dear friend of mine, um, Ray Hughes, has a best friend named Larry Randolph. I don't know if you've ever heard of Larry Randolph. He's a wonderful preacher. And uh, we're talking about prayer tonight and seeking God in prayer. And I heard, you know, there, I think when we all go through these time valleys and, and times of desert time, we really go through those times with what we have already received. Because it's hard to seek the Lord when you're in a, in a, a down time. And thank God we've got brothers and sisters who will pray with us and be with us during that time. But he said that for many years he went through a time that he did not know how to pray. 
So he, every day, he would say, because he didn't feel the presence of God, he didn't know how to, to seek the Lord in prayer. And every day he would say, I love you, Lord, and help me, Lord. I love you, Lord, and help me, Lord. He said those two things in prayer got him through every valley and every desert he's ever been in. So that, that's something you need to write down if you don't know how to pray and you're in a time of darkness or in a time of depression or hope to God you're not in time of depression, but um, that's something that you need to say is help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, and I love you, Lord. Amen. Those are always things that we can say. Excuse me. The, um, the kingdom of God, I read today, I wasn't really looking for this. It says the kingdom is not in word but in power. Hallelujah. And I just meditated on that scripture. And I said, Lord, you know, I was thinking that that was all in the word. <laughs> you know, but you're saying it's not in the word, it's in power. But the more I thought about the kingdom life, you know, God puts it that the word in our heart, but when we're joined to the body of Christ and he's the head and he is directing us and he is instructing us, that is the power of God. We're living out what God puts in us. And until we have that knowledge, until we seek him and get his understanding through his word, we're going to be wandering in a desert. It won't be just a certain circumstances. It will be our life will not have a plan. So it is so valuably important to get a plan for your life. Seek wisdom, seek God, ask for wisdom, and get understanding. Yeah. We were looking at that scripture, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. It says we have this treasure in earthen vessel. So land is not only where we live, or our city, our country, our earth, our, ne our world, but we have this treasure in earthen vessel. He'll heal this land. It's important that we have this land healed. You know, if, if we're going to be effective in the kingdom of God, we're going to have to be healthy vessels. What I wanted us to do is consider God as our Father. When he says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. When we really consider the vastness and the fullness of our Father, it, you know, there is, is divine protection in him. He has got an inheritance for his children. He gave his only son that we could be saved. And it is through his blood, through his very own son's blood, that we live. You know, another thing that as we grow, our purpose is to share the word with others, to be a mother or a father, to grow up in the Lord. And we're going to have to face, we've already faced the devil. We've resisted the devil, and he's gone out of our life. Have you ever heard that when you go up as up to a certain elevation on a mountain that snakes can't live up there. I don't remember how, what the elevation is, but there's a, an elevation on the earth that if you get up there, no, no snakes can live up there. And I think that is a type and a shadow of us living in the high places. We're called to a high calling in Christ Jesus. So we don't want to settle for fighting the devil all the time. You know, or the devil made me do it. We want to get to a place where we can say, God, you are my God, and I am not going to have to. I can remember a preacher saying one time, if you can believe it, you can reckon the devil dead in your life. And I couldn't sleep all night that night because all I could hear, I didn't hear another word he said or remembered another word he said, but he said, if you can believe it, you can reckon the devil dead in your life. And it was about living on that mountaintop. We have to go down in the valley. That's where the fruit grows, and that's where the people live. That's where we minister to. 
That's where we minister in, in the valleys to our loved ones and to our people who don't yet know the Lord, who are babes or growing up. But when we have our time with the Lord, we can go up on that mountain and we have already resisted the devil. We've already put him behind us and reckoned the devil dead in our life. And now, uh, that's what the Father gives us, is he gives us the power to live a life for him that can take us to where we don't have to live in darkness or depression. Or He causes us to be overcomers Hallelujah. by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and loving not our own life, our own getting our own way, even unto death. I wanted us to, another thing about um, prayer I think that is important is the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. So if you would turn to 1 Corinthians 14, for he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man but unto God for no man understands him howbeit in the spirit he speaks mysteries don't you want to know the mysteries of God aren't you hungry to be able to unfold this word of God and know the height and the depth and the width and the breadth of the word of God that's praying in the spirit that's howbeit in the spirit we speak mysteries and go down to verse 4 it says he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself but he that prophesies, prophesies edifies the church. So how are you going to ever be able to edify someone else if you have not first edified yourself? And that's not a one-time deal. That's constantly. That's, you know, and when, you're, when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit and you pray in the Spirit, I believe it says that we're to pray without ceasing. But in our natural mind, that seems impossible. But when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit and you have been on a regular basis speaking in tongues because you do not know what you need to pray for, you know, even in this church, I don't know the needs of this church, but if I pray in the Spirit, I'm praying to edify and build up this church. But I believe that when, when we pray without ceasing in our spirit, man, there is a, a constant turning in the Spirit. It says that there is a, a groaning in the Spirit that cannot be uttered, that cannot be spoken. So there is a constant travail. It says even the creature is in travail, waiting for that perfection, waiting for the sons of God. So as we're seeking him on a daily basis, as we're praying through, not just for ourselves, but for others, you know, the family of God is a love language. And love speaks so much louder than any, any language. Any words that we can speak or, or any country that we're in, if we will love those people, that language will speak so much louder than anything we could ever say. So we know that now that by speaking in tongues, we're going to learn mysteries and we're going to know the will of God for our life and for our family's life and be able to speak what God wants us to speak. There's a scripture that I'd like for us to turn to is, if I can find it here, James 5.16. And there's a certain part of this, that this uh, group of scriptures here that jumped out at me. But I'll start, I'll read through it. It says, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. That's that toda, realizing that we need one another. That you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That word effectual means producing. These are adjectives that describe a man, but they're really verbs because... The, uh, this man is, is, is producing life. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That word fervent means to glow. 
showing great warmth of feeling and intensely devoted. That word glow, it kind of reminds me of when Moses came down off of the mountain. You know, we can have a little, a little we can catch the glory when we're in the, in the presence of God, when we're praying. And I don't know of another way you can do that except that intimacy with God is catching his glory. And he said that he will cause his face to shine upon us. When Moses came down, I don't believe that he knew that his face was like that. You know, God had totally changed his face to glow that the people could not even hardly look upon him. But it says the word fervent is to glow, showing great warmth of feeling and intensely devoted. And the word availeth means it's taken from the word valor, it means plus a strong help. And then in the next verse, it says, Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly. That word earnestly means seriously without joking. It also is another word for money. So the word valor, the word availeth, it comes from the word valor, which means plus a strong help. So earnestly means seriously without joking. So Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. His words did not fall to the ground, but they accomplished what he sent it forth to do. That is like God. That's the goal that God has for us. He's saying, if, if Elias can do it, and I put it in the Word, I put it in the Word for you to know that you can do this. Amen. So he says, and he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he that converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. God gives us that fervent prayer that we will be able to pray and see people delivered from sin. And hopefully one day we'll be able to speak to the wind or speak to a storm. And, uh, you know, that when that fullness comes, that's the goal that he has is that we will be as he was in the earth. That's his promise. You know, we feel like it's a long way off, but when that change comes, it could be very quick. He's, he's going to do a quick work. So we need to be looking for him, looking for him to do that. Um, I have another scripture here. In 2 Corinthians 3.18, Second Corinthians 3.18. But I'm going to start back all the way up into verse 7. <coughs> and we're talking about Moses. But if the ministration of death written on engraven stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious. For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelled or became great. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remains is glorious. So what it is saying is, is that when, when Moses went up on the mountain, he came back with the glory of God upon him. And that, it says here in verse 18, But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So what we're intending to do is to go up on that mountain in the Spirit. 
We're to go up on the mountain where the snakes can't live. And when we do that, it says it's like a mirror that he is reflecting his glory. And we're not conscious of that in pride and in self-righteousness. But as we go on our way and we're seeking him, it happens in our life. He's changing us, even though we're not always knowing it. He is changing us from glory to glory. And it says we're going to be changed into his same image. So that is the result of good prayer, of asking and seeking and knocking. When we knock, we're to continually turn and knock. Turn over and over and over and knock. You know, do, do you remember? I think it's past time. Is, am I st- can I still go on? Do you remember seeing the picture? Everybody has seen it, or I have, anybody that's an older person. The picture of Jesus in the garden, and there's a door there. That door does not have a doorknob on it because the doorknob is on the inside so that we have to keep opening that door, keep turning towards him, keep asking and keep seeking, keep knocking, keep praying and keep believing. And like that little child that I was when I was 12 years old, and all you have to do is believe. You can do that. Thank you.